Hello, today we're going to look at this idea of resistant bacteria. And by resistant, we mean bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics, which are medicines that help treat infections from bacteria. Now, the first thing to remember is that pathogens can reproduce very rapidly. By pathogens, we mean bacteria that can cause disease. So here I've got a pathogen. You can see it reproducing there. You can pretend that's inside the body. They can almost reproduce once every 20 minutes. So in other words, double every 20 minutes if the conditions are right. Now, the next stage in this is that what happens when they reproduce is that we get mutations in the DNA and that can produce new strains. So mutations in the DNA could produce new strains or new variations of this bacteria. Antibiotics kill bacteria or pathogens. There's our antibiotic and you can imagine that the antibiotic will come into contact with the pathogen and kill them off. However, in this case, we've got one particular individual here that is resistant. It's a strain that is resistant to antibiotics. If it's resistant to the antibiotics, again, this resistant strain can start to divide and produce uh, many more copies of itself, or at least many more resistant bacteria. Now, the problem here is that the antibiotic that we had before won't work. So there's the antibiotic. As you can see, it has no effect on that new strain of resistant pathogens or new strain, strain of resistant bacteria. We have to use a new or different antibiotic. And that is what sometimes what doctors do. And again, with our new antibiotic, it kills that new resistant strain of bacteria. However, we have to remember that bacteria or mutations in the bacteria happen all the time. And we might get some strains that are resistant to the new antibiotic. And therefore, these new bacteria, this new strain or new version of the bacteria can then begin to reproduce in the body. And I said rapidly there because, as we said, under the right conditions, they can double once every 20 minutes. So here we have a new population of the new resistant strain of bacteria. And even that second antibiotic doesn't have an effect. So both antibiotics are no longer able to destroy those bacteria. It is now resistant to two antibiotics and we have to either use another antibiotic which might have to be developed and if it has to be developed it's a long and slow and expensive process even if the antibiotic could be found. So we can see that antibiotic resistance is quite a problem and if we're not careful we are going to start running really low on antibiotics that can be used to treat people. Now I think it's worth making a note of the different steps here. So if you haven't done so already, you can just grab a bit of paper. We can make some notes here. So in the first stage, we must remember that bacteria can reproduce rapidly. And if they can reproduce rapidly, that means they can evolve rapidly because they will produce new generations of bacteria very quickly. In the second stage, we could say that mutations in pathogens, in the DNA of pathogens, can produce new strains. Okay, remember by pathogens, we mean uh, microbes or bacteria that can cause disease. So disease causing bacteria in this case. And they can produce new strains. And by new strains, um, I haven't defined that yet, but a new strain is when we have a new version or a new variation of the bacteria uh, compared to what we had before. We call it a variant. I think that's with an A, a new variant. Then we have the idea that some strains might be resistant to antibiotics and so therefore they are not killed. And they are resistant because the DNA has mutated to allow that to happen. They survive and reproduce because they are no longer affected by the antibiotic and that means the resistant strain can now spread. And the reason that it can spread is because we have firstly people who are not immune to this disease, this pathogen, and also there is no effective treatment. So we have people who are not immune and there is no effective treatment because we've developed this resistant strain of bacteria. Now it's important to remember there that these four steps that we've talked about here, these are actually what we looked at when we looked at the idea of evolution by natural selection. That was Darwin's theory. And this is an excellent way to demonstrate the principle of, of natural selection because it happens in bacteria over a short period of time. It, it can actually be observed over a short period of time. So those four steps there are similar, if not the same, as you would use for natural selection. One example of a resistant strain of bacteria is called methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. We can just reduce that to MRSA. You don't have to remember that whole name. But this is um, 
quite a famous example because it was a, a strain of bacteria that was resistant to a whole bunch of different antibiotics and it caused no end of problems, especially in hospitals where people were able to spread that disease because that's where people go when they're not well. 